Rats don't mind injections. It's restraint they don't like. My name is Emma Robinson. I'm a professor of psychopharmacology at the University of Bristol. The Three H's is a initiative that we launched back in March 2024 based around a core question. How can we work with these animals in a way that they have a better experience and give us better science? The traditional approach to housing laboratory rodents is that they're in small cages and small cages do not necessarily offer those animals capacity to express natural behaviours. But we can take them out of those environments and give them opportunities for more enrichment. We've introduced things like play pens, and that gives them enrichment. It gives them social enrichment. It gives them an environmental enrichment. And I think there's a really good example. Mice have always been group housed. We think they're sociable. We think that they want to live with each other. So we asked that question. We said, do male mice prefer to live on their own? We house them singly. We house them in groups. And the single house male mice said they were much happier than the group house male mice. So it turns out male mice don't want to live with other male mice. In fact, they're much happier when they live on their own. Physical restraint in animals causes distress. And if we can minimise its use, then we improve animals' welfare. We also improve our scientific outcomes. We see restraint being used in veterinary medicine, in farming. And I think we've underestimated how much animals don't like it. So we acclimatise them to us as their handlers so that they have a positive association with us. We don't use restraint. We don't force them. We train them to accept procedures. We can give drugs in palatable solutions. They actually queue up for drug dosing. So it turns out they don't mind injections. Actually, it's restraint they don't like. We also do a lot of work around what we call positive reinforcement. We all like to work for rewards, so why can't the rodents? What we do is we make a positive association. When we go to the cage to do a health check, to uh, handle the animals, we give them a small reward at the end. Rather than every time a person goes in the room, the animal may be fearful because they don't know what's going to happen, when you have given positive reinforcement, you will find all of our animals are coming to the front of the cages to say, hi there, what's going on? Who's going to give me something? They feel a positive experience because they're having an expectation of a positive outcome. And that changes the way the animals interact with us completely. Using animals in research it's not something anyone wants to do unless you can see a clear reason for it. And so always asking yourself, do we need an animal? Could we do this a different way? Can we ensure that we're using the right number of animals to make sure our data is reliable? Once you've answered those, for me, then the most important thing is to make sure that their animal experience is enriching for them and quite a positive experience. Because if the animals are already stressed by their environment, then we are not looking at the best model. I really believe that we wouldn't have achieved the scientific gains we have if we hadn't really focused on that day-to-day -day management of our animals. All of those things are helping us to do our research better, but also making the animals experience better.